From the front range of the Rocky Mountains in beautiful Colorado, it is Tuesday, October 13th, 2020, and this is Truly News. I am your host, Jason Van Sickle. Welcome to a new day. I hope that you had a great day yesterday. Remember that every day is a fresh start. The past is behind you, and the future is what you decide to make it. So. As you go through the day today, here is a thought to consider. If there is something that you want in life, then organization is usually the first step towards success. Clearly define your goal and outline the steps that you will need to take to achieve it. Then create a plan of action. Outline the efforts that will be needed to move yourself forward. And track your progress along the way. With the organizational pieces in place, it simply becomes about putting in the work. Well, for whatever it's worth, those are my thoughts for today. Now, let's take a little time to get smarter and better informed about the world by reviewing today's news. As always, we start with a look at the top headlines from across the country. The top headlines at most news agencies are focused on the Supreme Court confirmation hearings of Judge Amy Coney Barrett, which began yesterday on Capitol Hill. The common theme among the articles was that the Republicans focused on Judge Barrett's impressive academic and professional record, while the primary focus of the Democrats was on her personal, religious, and political views which they say signals that she would be a threat to things like the Affordable Care Act and the abortion issue. The hearings are set to last until the end of the week. In other headlines, USA Today reports that Trump holds his first post-COVID rally. Speaking without a mask to a largely maskless crowd, Trump held his first rally since being hospitalized for COVID. At the rally, he made statements such as, quote, They say I'm immune. I just feel so powerful, unquote, and, quote, I'll kiss everyone in the audience, unquote. Biden called the rally reckless. From National Public Radio, unauthorized election ballot boxes have been found across California. On Monday, California's Secretary of State and the Attorney General sent out cease and desist letters to the state Republican Party. In a written statement to NPR on Monday night, the California GOP spokesman wrote, quote, We are going to continue our ballot box harvesting program and not allow the Secretary of State to suppress the vote, unquote. According to reporting, many of these drop boxes bear signs claiming they are, quote, official, unquote, and are located at local political party offices and churches, as well as candidates' headquarters. An ABC affiliate reported that in some instances, the boxes were simply cardboard containers without locks. And finally, in our look at the top headlines, here are the stories that are crossing the wire at Reuters News. Johnson & Johnson has temporarily paused its COVID-19 vaccine trials due to an unexpected illness in a study participant. And U.S. ethics groups say Attorney General Barr has used Department of Justice as a political tool and call for his impeachment. Two private groups focused on U.S. government ethics on Monday accused Attorney General Barr of misusing his office to support President Trump's political goals and called on the House of Representatives to begin impeachment proceedings. And those are your top headlines for today. To put us all in a better mood after those headlines, we now present our Top 5 Joke Countdown. As usual, bringing us the countdown is my friend Billy Cunningham. Billy is a comedian who goes by the stage name Potbelly. And here's Billy. 
Thank you, Jason. From the studio here in Sweetwater, Appalachia, this is Billy Potbelly Cunningham. By the way, for those of you who live in Salisbury, Tennessee, on October 10th, I will be performing at Leroy Green Jeans, Sticky Buns Bakery, and Comedy Club. Hope to see you there. Now, on with our jokes. My intern, Penny, is handing me the joke cards for the day. She gets these jokes from Reader's Digest, and, as an up-and-coming comedian, she often rewrites a few to make them even funnier. So, let's see how she done. And looking here at the cards, it looks like our category today is dog jokes. Ooh, baby. Here we go. Number five. This first card says, Question. What do you call a dog magician? Answer. A labracadabra door. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Number four. What do you get when you cross a cocker spaniel, a poodle, and a rooster? Answer. A cocker poodle do. Oh, <laughs> Penny. What the heck are these? <laughs> I know they're jokes. It's the best they had. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Let's try another one. Let's see here. <laughs> nope. I'm not going to read that one. Uh, oh, geez. Skipping that one, too. Okay. Let's try this one. Number three. Did you hear what happened to the dog that pulled over to the side of the road to give birth? She was ticketed for littering. Oh, man. Jeez. <laughs> What? No, I didn't like that one either. <laughs> Why? Because it wasn't realistic. Everyone knows dogs don't drive. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, number two. My friend Freddie Huckleberry said he threw a stick five miles and his dog managed to find it and bring it back. I have to say, that seems a little far-fetched. <laughs> okay, that one's all right. <laughs> but Penny, one out of four. You're lucky you're an unpaid intern. Oh, number one dog joke of the day is, oh, man, you know what, Julio, stop the drum roll. <laughs> this last joke isn't funny either. Man, what a day. I think we're done. <laughs> Come here, Cooter. Cooter's my dog. What'd you, what'd you say, Penny? Why'd I name him that? Because he looks like a fat little turtle. <laughs> hey, Cootie. Come here, boy. Come here. Yeah. Oh, don't don't lick me. Your breath stinks. Oh, boy. Sit. Sit. Sit, boy. There you go. Hey, Cootie. Hey, what'd you think of the jokes today, boy? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, I agree, buddy. <laughs> Good boy. Well, those are your jokes for today. I'm glad we had a little time together this morning, and I look forward to our time together tomorrow. In the meantime, be kind to others, be good to yourself, and keep on smiling. This is Billy Potbelly Cunningham signing off. Over and out. There you have it, folks. Billy and his top five countdown. Thanks, Billy. And now we return to the news. From the world of science and technology, BBC News reports that black hole breakthroughs win Nobel Prize. Sir Roger Penrose, Reinhard Genzel, and Andrea Gez were announced as this year's winners of the Nobel Prize in Physics. Sir Roger, from the University of Oxford, demonstrated that black holes were an inevitable consequence of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. Penrose received half of this year's prize, 
The other half goes to Genzel and Gez for their discovery that there is a black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Also from the BBC, there is a real and imminent extinction risk for whales. More than 350 scientists and conservationists from 40 countries have signed a letter calling for global action to protect whales, dolphins, and porpoises from extinction. They say that half of all species are of concern, with two species being on the edge of extinction. And from CNET, Amazon is poised for another record Prime Day. Today officially kicks off Amazon Prime Day, which is actually a two-day event. The event started at midnight and lasts through Wednesday. The event is expected to be so big that even rivals like Walmart and Target will benefit. The two retail giants, along with others, have decided to announce Black Friday-like discounts during the Prime sales days, making the next two days the new official start of the holiday shopping season. And those are your science and technology headlines for today. In health news, CNN reports a new study finds that young Americans are more likely these days to say no to alcohol. Calling them Generation Dry, more college-age Americans are choosing not to drink alcohol when compared to college students over the last two decades. According to the Center for the Study of Drugs, Alcohol, Smoking, and Health at the University of Michigan, between 2002 and 2018, the number of adults aged 18 to 22 in the United States who abstained from drinking alcohol increased from 20 to 28 percent for those in college. For those not in school, the percentage increased from 24 to 30 percent. Alcohol abuse among both groups decreased by roughly half. And in other health news, from the journal Nature, what does the data really say about face masks? The short answer? The science supports using masks. Research shows that they cut down on the chances of both transmitting and catching the coronavirus. And that is your health news for today. Now we take another break from the headlines for today's words of wisdom. To present this segment is Dr. Albert Feinstein, my philosophy professor from college. And here is Dr. Feinstein. Thank you, Mr. Van Sickle. Hello, and welcome to today's Words of Wisdom. Today's words come from Pablo Picasso. It is he who said, Only put off until tomorrow what you are willing to die having left undone. This saying is a reminder that procrastination is the killer of dreams. We never know how much time we have in this life, so we need to treat every day like a precious gift. Also, we need to pursue our goals and dreams as if the end could come at any time. Grab hold of life, be bold in your dreams, and be determined in your efforts. Do not keep waiting until tomorrow to begin working on those things that you want to accomplish in this life. Start your future now. And those are your words of wisdom for today. Until next time, keep seeking wisdom and believe in your incredible potential. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Feinstein. We appreciate your words of wisdom and your words of encouragement. Now, we return to our review of the day's news. In entertainment news, we start with new movies, and today's new movie is Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo, starring, of course, 
Fred, Velma, Daphne, Shaggy, and Scooby. This movie falls into the categories of animated, adventure, and comedy. And here's the description from IMDb. Scooby-Doo and the team gather again to solve the mystery of gigantic proportions and save Crystal Cove. Happy Halloween, Scooby-Doo is now available to rent on YouTube. Moving on, we look at newly released shows, and today's show is Raised by Wolves. This series falls into the categories of drama, fantasy, and sci-fi. And here is the description from IMDb. Androids are asked to raise human children on a mystery planet. Raised by Wolves is now showing on HBO Max. Finally, in our entertainment news, we take a look at newly published books. And our book for today is Killing Crazy Horse, The Merciless Indian Wars in America by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Dugard. This book is presently number four on the New York Times nonfiction bestseller list. And here is a summary of the book from Amazon.com. The latest installment of the multi-million selling killing series is a gripping journey through the American West and the historic clashes between Native Americans and settlers. Killing Crazy Horse is now available in print at your local bookstore, and it is also available in print, Kindle, and audiobook formats on Amazon. And that concludes our entertainment news for today. As always, we end our broadcast with a look at what we call Happy News, and here is your Happy News story for the day. From the Journey Standard in Freeport, Illinois, the words of a reporter who wants to remind us that small acts of kindness are sometimes the most important. The title of the article, The Kindness of Strangers is What Life is All About. And the author's name is Jane Lethlin, and here is what Jane writes. I know I've written about this before, but Bruce Johnson, who used to be the manager of the Stephenson County Farm Bureau, used to say, quote, There are no strangers, only friends we haven't met, unquote. Bruce told me this one time, and it is something that he used to tell his sons. Bruce died a couple of years ago, but his words have always stuck with me, as I am sure they have with his sons. I got to know a stranger a couple of years ago. His name is Mike, and he is a neighbor who lives down the street. Mike is someone I never knew until he did something kind for me by picking up all of the sticks in my yard after a storm. I was struck by his kindness then, and after another bit of kindness from this man, I am reminded that this stranger has now become a friend. It was this past Friday when I came home from work and Mike was raking the pine needles and the leaves from my yard. I called to him and said, Mike, you are a godsend. He replied, don't tell anyone. Mike is a humble man who does things for others out of the kindness of his heart. He would not be happy if I revealed his last name in this column because he would be embarrassed. But I have to say, people like Mike are what makes things right about the world. This man is retired, and I know I am not the only recipient of his kindness, but to know that in an otherwise cold and divided world, we can still be surrounded by people with kind hearts thinking of just being helpful. I just cannot imagine my life without being kind to strangers. I often ask servers their name. This makes the meeting more meaningful, and it is my way of letting the person know that they matter. People matter. Life matters. If we did it right in this world, strangers become our friends. And, maybe not in the sense of close friendship, but if there is another chance for meeting with that person, it makes the connection special. And that is your news for October 13th, 2020. Have a wonderful day.